Is there some design principles that were in your mind around SciPy? Like, was there some yeah. key ideas that were just like sticking to you that this is this is, this is the fundamental ideas? Yeah, I would say so. I would think it's basically accessibility to scientists. Like, give them, give scientists and engineers tools that they don't have to think a lot about programming. So, give them really good building blocks. Give them functions that they want to call and sort of just the right length of spelling. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, there's a one tradition in programming where it's like, you know make very, very long names, <laughs> right? And you can see it in some programming languages where the names get, you know, take half the screen. And I, I and in the Fortran world, characters were, had to be six six letters early on, right? And that's way too too much, too, too little. But I was like, I, I liked to have names that were informative, but short. So even though Python, well, this is a different conversation, but yeah. uh, documentation is doing some work there. So when you look at great scientific libraries and functions there's there's a richness of documentation that helps you get into the details the first glance at a function gives you the intuition of all it needs to do by looking at the headers and so right. on but to get the depths of all the complexities involved right. all the options involved documentation does some documentation of the work. is essential yeah. yeah so that was actually a, a, a so we thought about several things one is we wanted plotting we wanted interactive environment we wanted good documentation these are things we knew we wanted the reality is those took about 10 years to evolve, right? Given the fact that we didn't have a big budget, it was all volunteer labor. It was sort of, um, when Nthought got created and they started to you know, try to find projects, people would pay for pieces and they were able to fund some of it. Mm -hmm. Not nearly enough to keep up with what was necessary. And I'm, no, no criticism, just simply the reality. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to start a business and then do consulting and then also promote an open source project that's still fairly new. Mm -hmm. Cypo is fairly niche. We stayed connected all the, all while I was a student, sorry, a professor. I went to BYU and started to teach electrical engineering, all the ma applied math courses. I loved teaching uh, signal processing, probability theory, electromagnetism. I was the, if you look at right, my professor, which my kids love to do, I, I wasn't, I, I got some bad reviews because people. What was, was the criticism? Um, I would speak too high, too high of a level. Like I definitely had a calibration problem coming out of uh, graduate work. Mm -hmm where I hate to be condescending to people. Like I really have a ton of respect for people fundamentally. Like my fundamental p thing is I, I respect people. Sometimes that can lead to a, I was I was thinking they were, they, they had more knowledge than they did. And so I would just oh, speak at a very high level, yeah. assume but, they got it. But they need to rise to the standard <laughs> that you set. I mean, that's one of the, some of the greatest teachers do that. You know? it, I, and I agree. And that was kind of what was inspiring me. Yeah. But, but, you know, you also have to, I, I cannot say I was an art, I was articulate as some of the greatest teachers, yeah. right? I was, you know, like one one classic example when I first taught at BYU, my very first class it was overheads, transparencies, overheads. Mm -hmm. Before projectors were really that common, I, so transparencies. I'm writing my notes out. I go in, room's half dark. I just blaring through these transparencies. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And I did, gave a quiz after two weeks. Mm -hmm. Never knew anything. <laughs> Nothing I had taught had gotten anywhere. <laughs> and I realized, okay, I'm not, this is not working. So I, I took, put away the transparencies and I turned around and just started using the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. And what it did is it slowed me down, right? The chalkboard just slowed me down and gave people time to process and to think. And then that made me focus. My writing wasn't great on the chalkboard, but I really love that part of like the teaching. So that, that, that entered SciPy's world in terms of, we always understood that SciPy, there's a didactic aspect of SciPy, kind of how do you take the knowledge and then produce it?